In my hands right here is the new Intel Core Ultra 200S Desktop Processor Series 2. These are the new Arrow Lake CPUs, Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and Intel Core Ultra 5 245K. And today I am going to talk about our launch review. Hello everyone, my name is Brent Justice and welcome to the FPSReview.com's YouTube channel. We have done a full launch review on the new Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and Intel Core Ultra 5 245K. Uh, today I'm going to give a quick summary video about our review and go over the benchmarks that we experienced. If you would like to get all of the details and analysis from that review, please go to our website, www.thefpsreview.com. And from there, you can find all of the percentage differences that we have talked about, as well as our analysis and a very detailed conclusion. Uh, that's the place to go for all of that. Today, I'm just going to do a quick summary, and we're going to talk about our review and uh, talk about our results. So if you are not familiar with the new Intel Core Ultra Series 200S Desktop Processor Series, these are the new Arrow Lake CPUs that have been recently launched. Uh, you've got the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K that has a suggested ETL price of 589, and the Intel Core Ultra 5 245K, which has a suggested ETL price of 309. The Intel Core Ultra 285K is an 8P core, 16E core CPU. These now no longer have hyper-threading or SMT. That means you have 24 cores on this CPU, 24 cores, 24 threads. It has several boost clocks. Uh, the thermal velocity boost is 5.7 gigahertz, but there are different turbo boost frequencies and uh, P-core max frequencies and uh, E-core max frequencies. The base processor power is 125 watts, but the maximum turbo power is 250 watts, and you will find PL1 and PL2 at 250 watts. The Intel Core Ultra 5 245K is a 6P core and 8E core CPU. That means it has 14 cores and 14 total threads. It has a max P core boost of 5.2 and a max E core boost of 4.6. It has also a uh, base power of 150 watts, but turbo power is 159 watts. I'm going to go over our benchmark graphs and show them to you. You can pause on each one if you would like to, to look at them a little bit longer. I will briefly talk about the results. Again, our written review has all of this in detail. For our system setup page, here is the table that shows how our systems are configured. You can pause on this and check this out. We also have a test setup page on our website that details and shows screenshots of all the settings so that you know what we are running. For our gaming tests, all gaming tests are being run with manual run-throughs. No benchmarks are used. Regarding the test setup, there is an issue that we want to talk about that we discovered while testing. Uh, it was not brought to our attention. Uh, we did discover this. There is, There are some oddities in the Windows Power Plan settings of Windows with Arrow Lake, and you're going to see that in the benchmarks, and we're going to talk about that at the end of this review, so stay tuned for that. But note that we found major performance differences between the balanced power plan in Windows 11 and the best performance power plan in Windows 11. Not using the control panel interface, however, we are using the Windows 11's UI uh, interface that it has, and we'll show a screenshot for the power plan settings. There is balanced, which is default when you install Windows. Balanced is the default that it runs in for every everything. You can optionally set it to a setting called best performance. Now, when we did that, we saw major differences on these two CPUs by doing that. And so therefore in our graphs, you will see that we are representing and showing both power plans on the 285K and 245K. They are labeled best performance for the best performance power plan mode, and then balance for the balance power plan mode. That is only on the 285K and 245K. For every other CPU on the graph, they are all in the balanced power plan profile. That is the default Windows power plan profile, and we always test in that. And we've never had such a variance before on a CPU. The other comparison CPUs on the graphs did not experience that issue. 
they all performed as expected in the balanced plan profile. So keep that in mind as you look through the results. There are both a best performance power plan and balanced power plan profile in the results. Starting in PC Mark 10's PC Mark 10 Express test, this is a very lightly threaded benchmark. It focuses on a system wide benchmark, but it is lightly threaded and it is more of an office type workload. We see the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and Intel Core Ultra 5 245K in blue with the best performance power plan profile in Windows. And then we see the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and Intel Core Ultra 5 245K in orange showing the balanced profile. Now, keep in mind that all of the other comparison CPUs are tested in the balanced power plan. However, the very first thing you'll see that this really showcases is the extreme difference between the balanced po uh, power plan and the best performance power plan in Windows on Intel Core Ultra CPUs. What we can see here is that using the best performance power plan greatly improves performance. Uh, without that in balanced, it looks quite poor. So when we increase to best performance, it is not a like for like power plan profile comparison, but that does show the Intel Core Ultra CPUs in the best performance possible. And that is the best performance we achieved. However, in this specific benchmark, even in that best performance power profile plan, it is still well under every CPU, including the previous generation 14900K and the current competition's 9950X. These sit below that. This is a very lightly threaded office type of workload. So let's move on from the system benchmark and look at some others. We'll go to 3D Mark. This is the CPU profile test, max threads. On this test, we are pushing every CPU to its limits with the maximum amount of threads available to that CPU. Now, in this, what we notice is the best performance to balance profiles have a much less difference than we saw in the previous benchmark. This one being more multi-core focused, there is less of a difference in that performance plan profile, which is very interesting. Uh, and as we see here, the performance is actually quite good with the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. Uh, we are much faster than the 14900K, the previous generation. So there definitely is an improvement there in the max thread performance. That's impressive considering the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K does not have hyper threading and the 14900K does. We also see that then beating the 9950X and that is good to see as well. When we go down to the Intel Core Ultra 5 245K, we see that it sits above the 14600K and 9700X. However, it is below the 14700K. Moving on to 3D Mark's single thread or one thread testing, we can see here that uh, once again, there is a big difference between the balanced power plan profile and the best performance power plan profile. And this imitates exactly what we saw in the PC Mark Express testing. Uh, that was a very lightly threaded workload and there was a large difference in the power plans there. And then this single thread focused benchmark, we can see there is a large difference there as well. So if we compare like to like with every CPU at balanced, the 285K would be slower than the previous generation's 14600K. And the 245K would be uh, on par with the 7950X3D in single thread performance. If we turn up the profile to the best performance power plan profile, uh, that changes things quite a bit. The Intel Core Ultra 9 285K is now much faster than the 14900K, showing an IPC improvement. And then we also see that beating the 9950X as well. And as for the 245K, it's about on par with the Ryzen 5 9600X, and that means it beats the previous generation 14600K and 14700K. Moving on to Geekbench 6, this is also multi-core focused. However, it is 
more of a varied benchmark than 3D Mark is. 3D Mark is a single workload that it's testing. Geekbench tests a series of workloads that are multi-threaded on the CPU. And when that happens, we are seeing a performance difference once again between the balanced and best performance power plans in Windows on Intel Core Ultra CPUs. So if we compare like to like in balanced, that actually puts the performance under the 9950X and just barely faster than the 14900K. But we move that up to the best performance power plan profile and now it is exceeding the 9950X and the 14900K. The 245K uh, is faster in both scenarios than the 14600K, uh, but it ultimately is under the 14700K. When we move to Geekbench's single core testing, this again replicates exactly what we saw in 3D Mark's single core testing, a huge difference in the power plan profiles between balanced and performance. That seems to be very exaggerated in the single thread or lightly threaded workloads. On the balance profile, it's just not comparable. But at the best performance profile, we find the 285K in Geekbench 6 single thread actually sitting below the 9950X, below the 9900X, below the 9700X, heck, below the 9600X. It is pretty much on par with the previous generation 14900K in this benchmark. The Intel Core Ultra 5 245K sits below the 7950X. It is pretty much on par with the 14700K from the previous generation. Moving to IDIS64 memory bandwidth, uh, Intel definitely has the advantage in memory bandwidth, of course, running at higher frequencies. Uh, we won't spend a lot of time here because this isn't really uh, a real world test. This is more of a synthetic test just to show the overall maximum bandwidth achieved. Uh, I think that the important point from this that we wanna make is that the memory bandwidth compared to the previous generation is the same. In fact, it may be just slightly slower due to some latency issues, but pretty much the bandwidth has not changed between the previous generation Raptor Lake and the new generation Aero Lake. So you're looking at about the same range of memory bandwidth between the CPU and the DDR5. And that's really the big point to take away from this. Now we were, are looking at IDA64's CPU AES. This is also a multi-threaded kind of workload. And, and for that, we can see once again, uh, there is not a big difference between the best performance or balanced power plan profiles here. On performance, however, there is a big difference. Intel Core Ultra 9 285K has a major regression in performance compared to the 14900K from the previous generation. Now the AES is in an encryption benchmark, so we're testing encryption performance here. And yes, the 285K has a regression from the previous generation, and that means it is well, well under the 9950X here for performance. Then the 245K, also a regression. We see slower performance than the 14600K and 14700K. Uh, so encryption there, a regression. Moving on to rendering benchmarks, Cinebench R23. This one is the multi-core test in Cinebench R23. And again, we do not see much of a performance between the best performance and balanced. And in this one, we are actually seeing the 285K uh, outperform the 9950X slightly. Again, the 285K does not have hyper-threading. And then for the 245K, we are seeing it beat the 14600K, but come under the 14700K, well under that. Uh, but it is faster, just a little bit, than the 14600K. And of course, the 285K is much faster than the previous generation here. So an improvement in performance for this test, even though it does not have SMT or, multi -th or uh, hyper threading. And then for Cinebench single core, uh, this again is where we're seeing that difference between the power plan profiles, best performance and balance is absolutely huge. On balanced, it is again, just not comparable. So in the best performance, it is much more comparable. And then we see the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K beating the 9950X in single core. And we see the 245K beating the, uh, 
or on par with the 14700K, beating the 14600K uh, quite a bit there. But keep in mind that had to be done with the best performance if you do like to like. Uh, then the 285k is slower than a 14700k or right on par with that so that's something to keep in mind that's where these performance plan profiles are affecting performance uh, in blender we are of course pushing multi-core workloads here uh, very heavily in this what we find is the intel core ultra 9 285k is pretty much on par with the 9950x in terms of rendering performance it's they're very close depending on the profiles there uh, and then the 245K, it is uh, just a little bit faster than the 14600K, but it is much faster than, say, the 9600X or the 9700X here, which is very interesting to see. Those extra cores are definitely helping uh, workloads like this. That continues in the junk shop scene. Basically seeing the same thing here, except this time the 9950X runs away with the score in this particular scene. Uh, something about that one it really loves so the 9950x takes the cake there but we are seeing the 285k much faster than the 14900k from the previous generation and we are seeing the 245k um, faster than a 9700x and 9600x uh, but pretty much on par with the 14600k so not really an advantage there with the 245k versus previous generation. In the classroom scene, we're again seeing the same as the previous scene. Uh, we're seeing the 9950X take a slight lead there, but the uh, 285K is very close. The uh, And that means it's faster than the 14900K from the previous generation. We are seeing the 245K uh, sit this time just a little bit above the 14600K, below the 14700K, uh, but that means it's faster than the 9700X and 9600X. In V-Ray, the 9950X X takes the uh, takes the win here. Huge win for it. The uh, 285K is under that, but it is faster than the previous generation 14900K. And then the 245K is a little bit faster than the 14600K, but definitely faster than the 9700X or 9600X. And finally, in Handbrake, uh, this is measuring the transcode time on the CPU for video encoding. Uh, and we do see that the 285K does improve over the previous generation 14900K, but very slightly. It is a very, very, very small difference. Uh, and the, it, the 9950X is right there on par with that. And then for the 245K, um, it is faster than a 9700X and 9600X for that. Um, but the 14700K wins, and it's about on par with the 14600K from the previous generation, so not a real huge improvement there. Now, for gaming, let's start in Alan Wake 2. Remember, all of our benchmarks are manual run-throughs. No benchmarks are used. This is a G GeForce RTX 4090 at 1080p. The first thing you will notice is that the Intel Core Ultra CPUs, well, they're sitting at the bottom. Now, there is a difference between the balanced and best performance profiles once again. We saw in the previous benchmarks that that was mostly affected due to the single thread or single core performance. And what do games love? They love single core IPC or performance or frequency. And we are seeing those power profiles play a difference here in the gaming performance. You will get better gaming performance in the best best performance power plan profile in Windows. However, even with that set in Alan Wake 2, well, they are the slower CPUs. They come in as the absolute slowest CPU for, for everything here. Uh, so that is pretty much night and day and pretty clear cut in this game, Alan Wake 2. Looking at Black Myth Wukong, this game, admittedly, is not the best game for showing CPU performance differences. It is very GPU-bound, even at 1080p. However, keep in mind we are using an in-game manual run-through. This is not the benchmark at all. Absolutely a manual run-through, so we are getting all the physics and AI and everything in the game calculated here, trying to show best. And the frame rates are all very close, but we can see a clear pattern here anyway. The Intel Core Ultra CPUs are sitting at the bottom as the slowest CPUs compared to previous generation and everything else. A regression in performance, you could say. Moving on to Cyberpunk, 
we are now starting to see a pattern, a repeated pattern here, and it is becoming a very clear pattern. Uh, first of all, there is a difference between the best performance and balance profiles. That's very clear as well in this game. Uh, but once again, we are seeing a performance regression on these CPUs compared to the previous generation of Raptor Lake. And of course, uh, AMD wins with the X3D parts. Now, in Cyberpunk, there is a special option to prioritize P cores. We tried this option to see what would happen and a look at the results. This is quite interesting. Uh, doing that, we can actually see quite a bit of a performance jump from the best performance there uh, at 139 up to 152 when prioritized P cores are enabled with best performance. That's quite a jump in performance. That's actually not bad. If we go back to this graph, 152 would put us on par with the 9900X. So it still wouldn't quite be as fast as the 9950X, uh, but it would beat the 14900K Raptor Lake CPUs as well. Now, keep in mind with Raptor Lake, you could also enable the P core option and that would most likely improve performance there as well. So like for like, it might not match up, but if you use those P cores, at least you're bringing it up to around that 9900X level, but it's still probably going to be beat by the 9950X, the X3D chips, and uh, possibly the 14900K when it also has prioritized P cores enabled. But we wanted to show this just as an alternative. Not all games have this option. Cyberpunk is unique in that it has that option. So keep that in mind. Now, Dying Light 2 is also great for testing CPUs. And we are once again seeing a big difference between the balanced and best performance profiles. If we compare like to like balanced profiles, uh, these CPUs are not competitive at all. The 245K sits quite far down there, uh, as well as the 285K. If we put it on best performance, it's better, but the 245K still greatly suffers in this game. And in fact, it's slower than the previous generation 14600K Raptor Lake refresh. So not really competitive there, a regression in performance. Uh, the 285K on best performance is kind of on par with a 9600X or 9700X, which uh, the price range between those two CPUs are very different. 285K much more expensive, and it's yet performing at the level of those cheaper CPUs there. And of course, that uh, is a regression still in performance from the 14900K, previous generation on that. If we go to Hogwarts Legacy, uh, we are using the Hogsmeade area, which is great for CPU testing. And again, we can see the balanced versus best performance. Huge difference there uh, on balanced, which is like for like. It is just not competitive. But at the best performance, the 285K is a bit better, but it's not any better than the previous generation. So it's still a regression from the 14900K and it's about on par with a 9950X here. Um, and then the 245K sits, well, it sits about 9900X level uh, of performance there. Uh, we can definitely see that the uh, previous generation had a much larger impact. And then of course the XVD chips much better in this game. Moving on to Horizon Forbidden West, this one was about the best results we got out of the Intel Core Ultra CPUs. Uh, there is a difference between the balanced and best performance still. Uh, that definitely exists, but uh, you will see that the 285K uh, is now up there, sitting above the 14900K in performance, so an actual positive gain for the new generation over the previous generation for a change. And then we see that the 245K depends on the profile, but it's kind of around, around the 14900K performance, which is very good because that's more than the 14600K uh, and kind of comparable a little bit to the 14700K there. So a good showing in Horizon Forbidden West for the CPUs. If we go to The Last of Us Part 1, uh, we again can see a difference between the uh, balanced and best performance here, but very s much more slightly in this game for the 245K. The 285K is pretty much the same performance. And however, it is well below uh, the 14900K from the previous generation. The 245K is 
uh, above a 9900X, 14600K, 9600X, but it's about on par with the 9700X. Um, not the best, but this is also not the worst we saw. And then Starfield, uh, surprisingly, the Intel CPUs do kind of okay here. The 285K is on par with the 14900K. It's not exactly any faster. It's just about on par with the last generation. The 245K is then about on par with the 9700X, uh, but the uh, 14600K is actually doing a lot better than the 245K. Moving on to CPU power, we are testing here the CPU package power reported by Hardware Info. This is a 10 minute run of Cinebench R23. We did also test both performance and best performance and balance power plans here just to see if there's any power difference as well. And there is actually a little bit. Uh, interestingly, the balanced plan on the 285K seems to be using a little bit more power than the best performance plan. And then on the 245K, there's definitely a big difference there. The best performance power plan is using much more power than the balance plan, which kind of makes sense for that one. Uh, so that is the first thing we noticed there. Uh, the 285K, how it compares to the 14900K. The 285K is using, is using less power than the 14900K. So that is good to see. That is an improvement in efficiency. It is not a large improvement, but it is an improvement. So we do see an improvement in power utilization. That, however, still means the 9950X is more power efficient than the 285K. Now, compared to the 245K, uh, we see that at about around the level of the 9900X on power. Uh, that does mean it is using less power than the 14600K. So that is a power efficiency improvement as well. And if we move on to the CPU package power of gaming, this is while you are gaming. Remember, the performance wasn't that great, so keep that in mind with these results. Uh, the 285K is using less power than the 14900K while gaming. However, the performance a lot of the time was under, well under the 14900K. So yes, you're saving power while gaming, uh, but you're also losing performance while gaming. So... How that goes hand in hand, there you go. The 245K is, again, less power hungry than the 14600K while gaming, uh, but the 245K was actually the worst in gaming performance. So you are, yes, uh, using less power, but you're also uh, losing a lot of performance with that as well. We also tested total system power. This is directly from the wall. And the Ultra 9 285K is uh, definitely less than the 14900K. And this is testing Cinebench here. So yes, you are going to pull less system wattage with that. And that means, however, the 9950X is still pulling even less than that. So that's going to save you the most power with the 9950X. The 245K uh, it is using less power than the 14600K, so you will save a little bit there. It is not a lot, but you will save a little bit there. Uh, and yeah, that's how that shapes up. Looking at CPU temperatures, uh, you, you don't really have to pay too much attention to these. Uh, a point, the, the main point here is that temperatures have been reduced with that lower wattage. There have been a, t a temperature reduction here. Uh, which just means you can boost at least to the highest frequencies of the CPU. Uh, so we are seeing less temperature there. You can't directly compare this to the competition, uh, but it's just interesting to note these differences anyway and see how this compares to previous generation of Raptor Lake. And there is uh, definitely a temperature reduction uh, with the reduced power. And then while gaming, uh, we also see that as well. In fact, the 245K ran very cool uh, while gaming compared to the 9700X and 9600X, they're all kind of around each other there. But again, keep in mind the performance was very, very uh, minimal on the 245K. So yes, it's running cooler, but it's also not performing extremely well either. The 285K also stays very cool while gaming uh, compared to the other CPUs here, but the performance difference is very different between a lot of this. And then total system idle power was also interesting to look at. We still generally find that the AMD Ryzen CPUs idle at a higher power 
all of the Ryzen CPUs are at the bottom, so that's not good. They're around 100 watts or a little over 100 watts total system power. And we see the Intel CPUs just idle with less power. Uh, interestingly, the previous generation Raptor Lake idled with the least amount of power. And it was actually Arrow Lake that uh, bumped up the power at idle just a little bit, but they're still very close. Um, it's just interesting to see that lineup. And there you go, everyone. A summary review of the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and Intel Core Ultra 5 245K. Basically the flagship and then the more budget or value-oriented CPU from the Arrow Lake generation from Intel, also called Intel Core Ultra 200S Desktop Processors Series 2. So I think you've got a pretty good feel now for the benchmarks. Again, check out our website for a full analysis uh, of each benchmark and what we think about that and the conclusion there as well. Uh, it is all written out for you on the webpage. My simple thoughts are this. There are some scheduling problems in Windows. There are some odd power plan profile things that are happening that we don't quite understand and intel is looking into this and there may be windows updates that come in the future that solve some of these thread scheduling problems it is obvious that there is a problem with the uh, lightly threaded or single core performance between the best performance power plan profile and the balanced power plan profile why that would occur we don't know it would seem more likely that that would be affecting multi-core performance, uh, but no, it does affect single core performance, which is quite odd. And on the multi-threading or multi-core performance, it is not as exaggerated. However, if you are doing multiple things, a multiple task workload, something that is multitasking, uh, then those power plan profiles can affect that multi-core performance as well if you're doing multiple things at once. Uh, when it comes to gaming, that is very single threaded based, that is very uh, single core frequency based. Um, and for that, these profiles do make a difference in gaming performance. So if you are buying these CPUs now, absolutely recommend that you enable best performance profile to get the best performance out of them. Uh, you will find a regression in performance if you use balanced. Uh, but again, this could be fixed in the future. And if so, perhaps they will bring that back because best performance does increase power usage as well. If you are buying these CPUs to save power as to be more energy efficient than a Raptor like Refresh, you are most likely going to want to operate in the balanced profile mode and not best performance. And all of the other CPUs we tested were tested in the balanced mode and they have the power savings with that while in Windows, but then also still perform at their best in applications and games. So there are some odd Windows issues that probably need to be solved here. Probably some BIOS updates that could be solved as well. So what we see in the performance is that the Intel Arrow Lake CPUs are very a very mixed bag and it kind of depends on your workload and what you're doing if you are using heavy multi-threaded multi-tasked things the 285k can be competitive and it's very very exciting actually because it lacks smt or hyper threading so the fact that it can achieve those performances without hyper threading is impressive that's an impressive feat so if we can see that improved in the future and a continued evolution of that, that could be quite interesting to see. There are many workloads where it can be competitive in multi-threading. And then there are workloads where it's not. There are workloads where it's an even a regression in performance. And we also see that with the single threading performance. There are some where it's good and some where it's bad, but it's a, a mixed bag. And it's that mixed bag of uncertainty that makes you question the value of it because are you going to be always getting the best performance in what you're doing it's hard to know you have to specifically look at what you want to do to determine if that cpu is going to be good for you or not but if you find that workload that that cpu is better for then it will be better than the previous generation raptor lake refresh you will have a power savings over the previous gener generation Raptor Lake refresh, uh, 
However, AMD puts up a really good battle with that power efficiency as well, performing the same or better, depending on the workload, but with less power in those multitask operations. Now in single core or gaming performance, I think it's clear that AMD has the lead here, um, especially in gaming performance, the 245K looked, uh, looked very, very, very low to us. Uh, that is just not the go-to gaming CPU at all. The, 240, the 285K could be considered a better gaming CPU, but I wouldn't say it's the best or the one to go for. It still seems that the best value is from AMD in the gaming department. If you're gaming, even if it's a 9700X, even if it's a dual CCD AMD part, that's still better than the Intel equivalent because it's just all over the place and you don't know where it's going to land in games. Some is going to be real bad and some is going to be okay but mostly it looks like it's going to underperform or be a, reg a regression in gaming performance. The one benefit we did see was with the 245K over, let's say, the Ryzen 5 9600X. The Intel Core Ultra 5 245K actually seems to us like a good multi-core, multi-threaded option over the Ryzen 5 9600X. So if you're comparing those two CPUs, look through the benchmarks and look specifically at the 245K and how it performed over a 9600X in multi-core workloads. If you're doing many things like uh, rendering uh, or video encoding, then the 245K could be better for that because of the thread count difference. Uh, keep in mind that the 9600X is a six core CPU and the 245K is 14 cores. Uh, so it can be a little bit better in certain situations. Uh, it's not going to be that in gaming, but if you're doing non-gaming things, it could be better for that. Uh, so that is one advantage we did see as was with the 245K in that scenario. But overall, um, for the price, AMD still holds a very high value with all of these CPUs. Zen 5 is turning out to be okay, and uh, improvements have been made, and we are seeing better results with that over time. But we do also have to say that it is possible that Intel uh, could age better over time as well. As we see microcode updates, BIOS updates, uh, Windows updates specifically are a pretty big one, I would say. Uh, even software updates that take better advantage of the cores, um, then we could potentially see differences in the future. Arrow Lake may be a CPU that does age well, and it may be going through some teething pains at the moment. I think what will be interesting will be to retest these CPUs six months from now, maybe three months, three to six months from now, and we see how these look again in the future. Things could change. Will they? I don't know. Uh, we obviously want competition. It would be a good thing to see that improve for competition's sake. So that seems to be what Arrow Lake is for us at the moment, is a mixed bag. It's not quite the gaming CPU. Mixed bag in multi-core, multi-thread usage, just depending on your workload. Maybe not so much for single-threaded, lightly-threaded things. For example, um, office type of work or work where you're going to be doing a lot of uh, business operations um, may not be the best for that at the moment due to that lower single threading and uh, sing, you know single core performance right now and the weird Windows power plan profiles. We have never seen such a variance between the uh, power plan profiles in Windows. So you definitely want to uh, keep an eye on that and see how that develops. Uh, that'll be interesting as we move forward. Anyway, I think that's going to be it for today, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this review summary of the Intel Core Ultra 9 285K and Intel Core Ultra 5 245K. Again, check out our website for the complete analysis uh, and data on this review. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have a very blessed day and stay tuned for the next one.